Okay, so we're going to simulate now uh, the uh, filters that we talked about and show you that the simulation shows exactly the hand calculations of the queue. So in order to do that, we brought up LT Spice, uh, and it's uh, a free LT Spice 4. And uh, there's a lot of stuff on the web of how to use it. And I'm going to assume that we're going to all know how to use it. So I go to File here, and we produce a new circuit. And we start bringing in the inductor. And you can uh, uh, rotate it so it's up. And then we get rid of the inductor, and we're going to bring in a capacitor. So we bring in the capacitor. We bring in a load resistor. And there we have it. And then we're going to have to bring in a sauce. And the sauce here would be a voltage sauce. Now we have to bring in a ground. And all we do is then get out and just connect them. Okay, then I'd like to label the nodes here of uh, VN. Uh, VIN. Okay, and then a V out. I'll just go with VN here, and then I could just uh, escape, right click this, and relabel that V out. Okay, and there we go. So now we got the input output. Now this is not, you got to specify these. So we want this to be 100 micro, Henry, and that's it. And uh, this, I want to be right click it, and that's going to be 100 micro Farad. And then the load we had is 1K. Okay, so now we want the source, we want an AC analysis. So we have to go to advanced stuff. And we just say, uh, we're going to do an AC. So there's the amplitude. We just put one for amplitude. And that's it. So now we have AC analysis on here. Now we have to go simulate it because we're going to get the output to input transfer function, just like we had before. So we go to simulate tools. And we go to edit here. And we're going to do an AC analysis. And we're going to go. Uh, this is octave. We usually go a decade, and a typically go 100 points per decade, 100. And then the start frequency, I'm going to put as a, a 10 hertz, and stop frequency, uh, 100 kilohertz. OK, so here's where our EC source is. And we're going to now go ahead and simulate this just by hitting this running man. And what we're going to do is just look at the output here. And you can see that we have the Q. And we have, where's the phase now? And the phase, you could, you have to kind of watch. You have to see the phase coming right here. And you can see how fast the phase is going. So that Q, we want to dampen that Q. So in order to dampen the Q, what we had before to dampen it is we had a resistor here. And the value of the capacitor would be about five times the capacitor. And we're going to dampen the Q. So let's, uh, let's try to do that. Let's first move this over a little bit. So we open the circuit up to move it out. And so that we could put an RC in here. So here's our C. And we're going to put an R. So let's move this up a little bit. Hit the escape. 
And I'm going to move the top end up a little too. Stretch it. So now we could fit our RC in here. Now, and in other words, we're going to connect the resist, uh, going to connect it. You can actually just connect it straight down. It'll connect through the whole thing. So when you go off of here, it'll just go ahead and connect it all. There it is. So now we're going to click on here, put one ohm. Okay. And then this one will be five times this, so we'll use 470 micro farad. 470 micro. Okay. Now we got about five to one. Now we should see this Q go way down when we simulate this because now your Q remembers the characteristic impedance, this, and this now at the frequency interest looks like a short, and it puts this R2 in parallel with the R1, so it's one. So one over the characteristic impedance of one, we got a, roughly a Q of one. So now we run it, and there's our Q go right back. You can see that it's a low Q. Now look at the phase. You see how the phase open up? Now that's going to be much easier to close the loop when we have the phase open up uh, so that the zeros would be boosting the phase up, see, as this phase comes down. And, and that's exactly what we want. Now, the more complicated model, the next is we'll, we'll, we'll DQ it again. Let's kind of move this whole circuit down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is going to add another inductor in parallel with this. So I could just do a copy. Add another resistor in here. Have to rotate it. Okay. Right click, get around. I'm going to move that over a little more. And again, these could be viewed as your analysis for your hand analysis that we did. Now this inductor, remember we want to be smaller, so we make that 10. Okay. Now the inductor will make a uh, resistor will make one ohm. And now we'll go ahead and connect them again. So now you see at the frequency of interest, there'll be this resistor R3 in parallel with R2 in parallel with R1. So you'll get even a, a le, a less than a Q of 0.5. So we run this again to verify it, and it should lower this Q again. And there you go. You can see now you open it up into two real poles. So let's move this down. You can see right here. Now, you don't see the ESR0 yet because we didn't put it in in here. So we need to put the ESR0 in. So let's do that next. Okay. We make the ESR0 10 milliohms. So now we're going to run it again, and we should start to see the phase come up as a zero there. And we'll have to calculate where that is. And that's going to be 1 over 2 pi RC. But remember, your phase here is close to, uh, there's about a hundred, minus 170 degrees right here. Remember, for, for the double pole, you're going to get close to the um, 180, minus 180, of course. So we will run it again. You see what your phase did? Look at your phase. It came up. Uh, you, you, you have to start seeing your zero somewhere, but we have to go higher frequency then to do that. But you could see that it'll be around 159 kilohertz. We're at only 150. That's why you're not seeing it. You're seeing one pole come here, the two pole, but you see the effects of the zero. Remember, the zero comes in a decade before, uh, uh, the phase comes in a decade before. So we need to go out and we need to change this to one megahertz and you're gonna see the SR zero. So let's come up to here, go to simulate. Let's go to, of course, we have to be on here. Simulate, uh, edit, simulation. Now we'll add one more zero to that. So that's a megahertz now. Now we just run it again. 
And you know, let's bring it the low end to 100 hertz. We don't need to go way up there. So let's look at the simulate again real quick. And let's start at, um, let's see, that's 100. Yeah, start at 100, add a zero to that. Okay. Now it's not 100 hertz, let's run it. Okay, so we could see that when we're running it, we have now the queue opened up even more because look at the phase coming down. It opened up even more, so you can see there's one and there's two. And you can see the first pole is moving in, and you see the first pole gives you a minus 90, and the second pole is giving you the other minus 90, and then your phase is giving you a plus 90. So you back down to 90. So what you have is one, two, and three in parallel. So you have 0.33 divided by a characteristic impedance. So it gives you about a Q of 0.3. And, and if you calculate the ESR zero is here to here, which is the one over two pi C1 R4, that's going to come out to about 159 kilohertz, 160. This is 100, there's 200. So 159 is around here. And you can start seeing the slope change a little. From if you take a piece of paper or something, you'll see that slope is here, and the SR opens it up. So from here, you're looking at minus 40 dB per decade, and then back to minus 20 dB per decade. You could see if I extract from here to here a decade, that's about minus 20 dB per decade when we're looking at here. So now you could see the phase starts a decade before. So a decade before would be somewhere around here. Now, why are you st still going down? Because you still have two poles here. As this pole comes in, you still have the other one, so so therefore the effect of the zero ends at a decade later. So remember, even if the pole comes in here, the phase starts a decade later, and then you have another pole here, and it and it goes ends at a decade later. So you can see then when they finally uh, are you run out of the um, the phase of the two poles, you're pulling up the zero coming in because the zero here starts at a decade earlier here. So you can see it's pulling back up. So if we want the two, we can now, let's move the zero in a little bit, because if we increase this, we'll move the zero in, and we should see this phase going less than this minus 40. This looks like minus 42 uh, or so. So let's, this, let's put this at uh, 0.025, okay? So we should now see the zero move in. Okay, remember this was 140? Look at it now. It's 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 just over one one twenty. So that's a, a a a twenty degrees difference in um phase. And you can see now the zero moved in a little more. See? The zero moved in. And but your phase tells the story. So let's go even 0.05. And we'll run it again. And remember, keep our eye on this is minus 120. We should see lower than that. And there it is. Now we see 100. So we can see moving the zero in boosts up the phase more here. And you see already, like I said, it mends off to minus 90 because now we can see it all because it ends at a decade after. And now the zero is moving in. Okay, so that's our lecture for the pole zeros. Uh, the next we want to do is uh, uh, go through the rest of the material, and then we'll start closing the loop later. Thank you.